On a quiet suburban street, a recurring battle in the war on drugs is unfolding. In similar scenes across the country, SWAT teams storm houses with high-powered weapons, tossing flash grenades to distract anyone inside. Sheriff's office, you're under arrest! Police search warrant! Police search warrant! There's a chemical spell back in that Once in the homes, officers find homemade labs to make methamphetamine, a powerful stimulant cooked from a crude combination of cold medicine and household chemicals. Methamphetamine has been the worst drug that we have ever seen in the history of drug enforcement. Lieutenant Lori Moriarty sees the devastating effects of meth almost every day as the commander of the North Metro Task Force near Denver. In the past five years, her task force has seized an average of one meth lab every week. We find labs in vehicles, motorhomes, trailers, and we have found them in homes on a golf course. Meth has become the leading drug problem in America, from small towns to comfortable suburbia. And inside these homes is a disturbing trend. It's not just the users whose lives are at stake, but the innocent. What's your name? And the most vulnerable are the smallest. It's hard not to be angry. I mean, I find myself just livid at the setting or the environment that these parents have put their children in. I mean, there were times when I couldn't figure out where the children were sleeping because the rooms were a disaster. Some of the rooms converted into the lab, yet still had the, the crib set up. So, I mean, all of the baby's blankets, toys, diaper bags, everything's still there, and a lab sitting in the middle of the, the bedroom. In the past five years, roughly 14,000 children have been discovered living in meth labs nationwide. And that doesn't include the countless numbers of children whose parents' use puts them at severe risk. We see children who are pretty severely neglected, as in filthy, dirty, diapers unchanged, not fed. Kids that are forgotten. Kids that are forgotten in a household with adults who are using methamphetamine drugs and being left to tend to themselves. Judy Liguri is Denver County's Child Protection Administrator. These are really vulnerable age children who really are not capable of taking care of themselves. They really need a parent to feed, clothe, and bathe them. To understand how it's possible for so many kids to be exposed to these dangerous conditions, you must understand the powerful hold this drug has on mothers like 23-year-old Jennifer Bennett. I wasn't there when my daughter started walking and um, my son said his first word. I didn't, I didn't see because I was high. Jennifer got hooked almost two years ago when after years of drug use, friends turned her on to meth. They just told me it'd be the best high I'd ever feel. And they were right. Within weeks, she was addicted, staying high for days at a time and crashing for just as long. I looked at myself in the mirror and I was so skinny that my ribs were poking out. And it kind of freaked me out because that's just not normal. I weighed 80 pounds. I was very, very sick way too sick to properly care for her children. In my kitchen that I had, there was a cabinet that was my daughter's cabinet, and in that cabinet was cereal. And when she would wake up in the morning, she would go to her cabinet and get her cereal out and feed herself, um, which is kind of brutal for a 16-month-old child to be doing by themselves. To support her habit, Jennifer was stealing arrested repeatedly it wasn't long before social services took temporary custody of her children it broke my heart to get to have them taken from me like that but it was at the same time the only opportunity i had to go get some serious help now jennifer is one of a significant number of meth addicts in the denver court system she must stay clean in order to get her children back